Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Dr. Matthew Holder, and I am the president-elect of the American Academy of Developmental Medicine and Dentistry. Uh, this organization is uh, uh, was founded in 2002, so it's a little over uh, 10 years old. And the purpose of our not-for-profit group here is to improve the quality of care of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, um, mainly focusing on adults. Um, this is really a, a very exciting time uh, for me and for this organization uh, to have this kind of um, energy coming from medical and dental students. And I'm going to think back um, about 10 years, actually, was when I was getting done with training. And at that time, uh, this organization didn't exist, um, and I, I uh, was, was getting out of school and getting out of training, and um, I never had any exposure or training uh, with respect to uh, taking care of this patient population, and since that time, um, I have learned a great deal, um, uh, mainly because of the colleagues that I've met uh, through this organization and also through my work with uh, Special Olympics International. And um, it really has uh, enhanced my professional life, uh, my professional career. I think it's uh, made me a better doctor. And um, I, I think that it's uh, something that um, I, I'm just so excited that we have so many students now that, that are interested in this. Um, I also want to tell you that it's not just um, me or the AADMD who are excited. Uh, I was recently contacted uh, by some uh, folks who are organizing um, uh, an event that is associated with uh, President Bill Clinton called the Clinton Global Initiative uh, University. And um, that is uh, an organization that was founded by our former president and uh, one of the things they're looking for this is um, an event that's going to be happening in just the next couple of months is um, student leadership and examples of how students in various programs around the world and especially here in the United States are going to change the world and um, uh, from what I understand uh, this student program that we're going to be talking about tonight is something that has caught their attention and uh, might even be featured um, at that upcoming event. Uh, so that's something that we can talk a little bit more about. But tonight um, I'm going to do uh, very uh, little of the talking. I'm going to turn this presentation over to two of our uh, student leaders um, and uh, for, for a presentation. And uh, before I do that, um, one thing that I would like you to do is to keep in mind that uh, during the presentation you can ask questions and I would encourage you to do so uh, while you think of them. Um, there's a little question box that you'll have in your toolbar and so while um, one of the presentations is going on you can ask a question uh, that way and then at the end um, we'll read the questions and we'll have a little bit of a discussion uh, via that, that mechanism. So uh, without further ado, I would like to turn over this presentation to um, an outstanding um, colleague, I, I would say, of ours and one of the main organizers behind this uh, student um, initiative, uh, Michelle Cornacius. So uh, without further ado, Michelle. Uh, thank you, Dr. Holder, for that uh, wonderful introduction and also that great news. Um, Sarah and I are extremely excited to be on tonight, and we're even more excited that you're all here to share this with us. So um, we'll just jump right in. Uh, we'll be presenting on students sharing with students, creating dental and medical programs for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Sarah Usher is um, a DMD candidate from AT uh, University, and my name is Michelle Kranachi, and I'm a Fourth year medical student at Robert Johnson. So, um, Dr. Holder was nice enough to start us off with a little introduction of AADMD. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the AADMD Student Resident Committee. Then, we'll go over the goals of the webinar. 
Sarah will then uh, take over and talk about how to create Day of Special Smiles. I will talk about how to create Disabilities Awareness Week. And um, we're then going to put a little plug in for the um, and the R Word campaign. And then we'll open it to question and answer. Question. So the AADMD Student Resident Committee was created last year in 2012. Uh, the main individuals that were involved in this initiative included Abra uh, Karochi, uh, Priya Hagler, and uh, myself. And it's been a really wonderful experience. Um, our mission is to create a community of students and residents interested in serving adults with uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities, or IDTD, and also to provide opportunities for education, leadership, growth, and growth within the medical and dental field. So we've been pretty busy, and uh, we've had a lot of amazing um, students and residents forming chapters nationally and internationally. This includes places like Arizona, Massachusetts, uh, uh, Kentucky, Canada, Jamaica, New York, and Pennsylvania, and we have four more chapters forming, and we hope to continue to grow. Uh, just to give you a kind of a, um, a broad idea of some of the things that we've been doing, we created a mentor mentee program uh, for individuals, various students and residents that wanted to work with seasoned physician and dentist to kind of help them, guide them as they go along their uh, journey and their career uh, choice of working with individuals with um, IPCP. Your dentistry. We also have four students and residents presenting oral presentations at the annual AADMD conference, and we have other students and residents presenting posters. Uh, a lot of the chapters are getting involved in the End to Our Work campaign, which we'll talk a little bit about later. We were also fortunate enough to receive a, a, a grant from the Special Olympics, the uh, different chapters as they grow. Um, and like Dr. Holder talked about, or we might be featured at the Clinton Global Initiative University meeting in April. And we hold monthly meetings um, where all the chapters share what they're doing at their uh, uh, institution. And just to give you an idea of um, how productive and how dedicated these chapters are, this past weekend, we actually, our University of Rochester chapter had um, a special smile day at the uh, 2013 Minster in New York special Olympic Games, and this is a picture uh, during the, uh, the DJ session, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and I met one of the, um, of the students of mine, one of the student leaders there, uh, Cynthia, and I was really impressed by her, um, her energy, enthusiasm, dedication, ideas. For example, she was telling me how she had a big exam that day, but how she was going to leave the door open so she could make sure she could hear the, the band of sub advocates play um, at one of their events. So I've just been very fortunate um, to be a part of a team of a lot of inspirational leaders and friends. So it's been a really fun experience so far. Um, but let's get right into what our goals. We want to share with other dental and medical schools how to create dental and medical services as well as advocacy projects for individuals with IDCD. In particular, the goal is to create a um, goal, uh, create day of social smiles and display the awareness week. Um, we want to provide guidelines as to how to make these effects and that's successful so that you guys can replicate it at your school. So um, that being said, I'm going to turn over the controls to Sarah Usher from AC Still University. And Sarah. Perfect. Um, can everyone see the screen okay? Yes. Perfect. Does everything look okay? Looks good to me. Looks really Perfect. Great. Um, so again, as Michelle mentioned, thank you so much for the intro, Michelle. My name is Sarah Usher, and I am a dental student at E.T. Still University, the Arizona School of Dentistry and Oral Health in Mesa, Arizona. And today what I'd like to talk to you all a little bit about is our Day for Special Smiles event um, that's held at our school. Um, I'll just go ahead and get started. Tonight, um, the presentation goals that I have is to provide um, a comprehensive overview of our Day for Special Smiles event. We would like to share our experiences with you and um, kind of empower you to create your own Day for Special Smiles event um, at your own school, your own, or, you know, your own institution. We'd also like to answer all questions regarding the event that you may have for us at the end of this presentation. So this is a big group picture of our event at ASDO. Um, 
this is in our dental clinic. As you can see, we have a lot of smiling faces there. We have um, the dean of our school is there and a lot of student volunteers, a lot of faculty and staff volunteers, and most importantly, the patients that come out for this wonderful event. So the event goals that we have for our Day for Special Smiles event is to encourage the current and future medical and dental students with a local population with neurodevelopmental disorders and intellectual disabilities. So we want to get these students more comfortable working with these, this population and just more introduced to these, to these great patients. Um, we like to establish a follow-up program for Special Olympics Special Smiles. Also, we'd like to inspire the community to serve patients with ND and ID by providing free comprehensive dental care, oral health education, and free medical screenings. Um, this event that we put on at our school, um, it's a collaborative event and um, efforts are collaborated between dental students, medical students, hygiene students, the current faculty of our school, local dentists, as well as healthcare professionals. Um, all these people come together just in a wonderful nature to provide much needed treatment for, these, for this special population. First of all, what I'd like to talk about is the team that put together this event and who puts it together every year. There's new leaders every year. Um, we kind of encourage the lower classmen to be involved so that the event will continue and be successful for the, for the following years. Um, the team, the main team that puts on the event is comprised of students, faculty, and staff. So together, these three entities come together to to make the event really happen. The students that are involved in the Day for Special Smiles planning, um, and really not in any order of importance, um, everyone is valued equally in this big, in this big event. Um, Abraham Kurochi, he actually wrote the Day for Special Smiles program and he tailored it to AT Steel University to our, to our program here. Um, he was also in charge of media coverage. That includes talking to our school, um, marketing and communication department, as well as um, the public media to come by and just capture the moments of this event. He was also um, in charge of making the banners for indoors and outdoors. As you can see in this picture, we have um, a few of the individuals at the event here, and he was in charge of making these big banners and things like this kind of might get overseen sometimes, but it's really important to just give a little extra direction to patients when they're driving through trying to find the location or at the building, which building should I go to, especially with this population where some people might be in wheelchairs or just have a little bit more of a struggle to walk through a parking lot. It's nice to have something um, very visible for your patients to see, you know, where the event is actually taking place. Dub Freeman is actually one of our DO students um, at the osteopathic school here at AT Still University. And he had a big role in recruiting medical volunteers to come by and be a part of the event as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, I'm Sarah, and I was kind of like the team coordinator. I was I was kind of like the cheerleader for everyone. I, you know, got got meetings going. We got um, action items together and just kind of kept everyone on track. It's a big event and there really should be a big um, centralized team leader to kind of keep everything cohesive through the whole through the whole thing. Um, publicity, when I say publicity, I was kind of in charge of um, I guess making the campus aware of the event, um, making faculty, staff, and students aware of what was going to be going on that day just to kind of ease any confusion or things like that. Um, I was also in close correspondence with administration. During these events, it's really important to make sure administration is on your side for all the support that you might need that day. Um, it's something that might get overlooked really easily, but with their help and their, their coordination, it's, um, the event can go very smoothly. 
Monica Louie, she was in charge of our referral lists, and this is for especially the dentists in the community, um, dentists who are trained to treat um, special needs patients. She was in charge of compiling a list of dentists who would be able to see the patient after the event if anything needed to be taken care of after this event, or just for follow-up care if the patient needed some follow-up care. She was also in charge of supplies, um, coordinating um, the, the supplies that we had. Most of the supplies came from our school, and they also came from the Arizona Dental Association, um, as well as the Arizona Dental Foundation. They're kind of a linked entity, so she worked with them to get the supplies 100% um, donated for the project. Angela Lee, she was in charge of recruiting volunteers, so she was the main go-to person for student volunteers, for staff and faculty volunteers. Um, she also reached out to community dentists who were trained to treat special special needs patients and get them in and involved in the action. Um, we also had a continuing education portion of our event, and I'll go into that a little bit more, but she was also the go-to person for information about the CE course for um, practicing dentists. Um, we're just continuing on with the student leaders. It's a big team. Nadia Fazel, she was in charge of assigning volunteer tasks. Um, she pretty much mapped out the whole dental clinic um, and put individuals in certain operatories, put support individuals in certain places. Um, it was a great help to have visuals of the whole event um, before the event even happened so that volunteers knew where they would be, volunteers knew how to get there, and volunteers knew who their support was behind the scenes if they needed something. Um, we'll also hit back on this when we talk about training that we had for all the volunteers that participated. Um, Nick Selva, he is um, another dental student and he was in charge of kind of logistics and things like that. He made sure that we had wheelchairs for our patients who needed wheelchair um, help. He was also in charge, of, in charge of the radiograph machines. We use a Nomad here at the school, um, something that's portable that makes the event a little bit easier. Um, sensors, things like that that you need for the radiographs. Um, he was also in charge of Dentrix, which is a software program that we use here at our school. It's just kind of like a charting program. He was in charge of making sure that we had ex um, accessibility to this to this charting for the day of the event. Miley Duong, she is actually a graduate of ASDO and she is in the AEGD, Advanced Education and General Dentistry program here at our school. And she was um, the main go-to person for recruiting and coordinating the resident volunteers who would like to be a part of, a part of the program. So she was a great resource for us. We also had faculty members on the team. Um, in particular, it was Dr. Denise Francis and Dr. Maureen Romer. Um, these two individuals were our liaisons between our ASDO dental clinic and the AADMD. Um, they were mainly in charge of many things actually, but one thing in particular is a special needs CE course. This is that course that I was talking to you about a little bit earlier. What, what the plan was essentially was to train community dentists at the time of this event to treat special needs patients. So they would complete a training course beforehand that was put together um, with the expertise of Dr. Francis and Dr. Romer and some others involved in the project. Um, they would complete the training course, participate in treatment during the event, and at the end of the event receive a lot of um, supplemental treatment supplies that they'd then be able to take back to their practice and um, employ as they were working with these patients. So um, after this was all completed they'd have some CEs completed as well as some great information, great tools to go back into the community and treat, treat these patients and be on that referral list that we created to um, to take care of these people after the event for follow-up care and things like that. The staff that was involved in the team, um, Karen Fallone, she is one of our hygienists at the school. She oversaw all the hygiene students that were involved in um, our Day for Special Smiles. She was the main go-to support person for them. Amanda Barstow is one of the re receptionists at the school. Um, she was 
um, just incredible in all in all her efforts. She was just a vital a vital vital point in this whole program. She was in charge of the scheduling of the patients. She initially scheduled the patient for a certain time slot during the day, um, so the patient already knew what time they needed to come in. Um, she also provided follow-up and aftercare appointments if that was necessary at the school, if there was not anything um, in the community that would accommodate these patients at that time. So she was just, she was amazing in everything that she did. She confirmed patient records and forms as well. I'll go into that in a little bit. Um, the students were required to fill out some forms and to make sure that consents, consent forms and, you know, his medical history forms, things like that were completed. So she was she was one of the main people who confirmed that all these forms and records were completed. Another member of the team, um, Joe Gambosi and Greg Rubenstein, they were communication and marketing individuals at our school and they gave us clearance for the external media that Abraham coordinated. Um, they also themselves provided photographers and video um, videographers to come in and just um, document the day for us which is a great, just a, a a great tool to have these, you know, these documentations later for, for future events and future needs. Um, they also provided resources for us post events, so they did a lot of online publications, um, campus newsletters, things like that, to kind of get the word out about what we did, why we did it, and how we can be more successful next year with the inclusion of even more volunteers and participation on campus and off campus. So. Um, these communication and marketing folks were a tremendous addition to our team. Some partners that we had um, throughout the whole project was, of course, the AADMD. Um, we have our ASDO um, Mesa, Arizona student chapter here who was heavily involved in the whole process. The majority of the student team members that you saw previously, they were essentially all um, student members of um, our AADMD chapter. Um, that was really, really great. Um, overview of the program, Dr. Stephen Perlman, um, Dr. Denise Francis, they were, they were our leaders in this, this whole endeavor, so it was great to have them, their expertise and everything that they, they had to motivate us with, that was fabulous. Um, we also partnered with the Special Olympics Arizona. This is where we got the majority of our patients. Um, what would happen was that we have Special Olympics events around the Phoenix area and dental students would all come together and volunteer. Um, usually the events are I think were on a weekend on a Saturday, maybe Saturday, Sunday, and we would go out and we would screen the screen the patients at the special smiles events. Um, it was a lot of fun and this is one way that we were able to to really get a great patient pool and bring everyone together, all these patients together and give them another resource, another option for care, which was at our Day for Special Smiles event. Some more partners that, that we were involved with, um, the Arizona Dental Foundation, um, they're in conjunction again with the Arizona Dental Association. Um, Penny Barkley was their main go-to person and I'm sure in your respective states or you know wherever you may be internationally I'm sure you have some kind of dental association that supports you know supports your dental endeavors or even if there's medical students or other health professional students um, on on this call as well. I'm sure you guys have some kind of support system or association where you could couple with to to look for donations for supplies and um, maybe educational um, publications and things like that. So we chose um, to partner with Arizona Dental Foundation and they I mean they're just a great partner in general and they help us out a lot. So they helped us with recruitment um, advertisement especially of that CE course they have a great database of dentists in the area who are involved um, and who, who are practicing um, they helped us with supplies for the goodie bags and you know just making those goodie bags happen for the patients and they also provided us with lunch um, every volunteer that was at the day for special smiles event um, was provided breakfast actually and lunch so that was just a great addition that we were able to provide for all the volunteers. We also partnered with our ASDO, ASDA um, campus group. This is the Arizona Student Dental, I'm sorry, um, 
American Student Dental Association, I'm sorry, we have a chapter here on our Mesa campus and they were gracious enough to provide us with toothbrushes, toothpaste, and you'll see um, possibly a little later we have some big tents that we used outside um, close to our entrance of our dental clinic and this is where this served as our registration area as well as um, the medical screening area and just um, some OHI oral health instruction areas for for us to just expand our our program from inside the dental clinic to outside the dental clinic just to get some fresh air for the patients and just to have a little more um, elbow room so to speak with the whole event so they provided us um, with some tents that we were able to use for this um, for this event some other support that we had um, was our Dean. Um, Dr. Dillenberg is our Dean here at ASDO. He's always so gracious to give us a few minutes of his time and really the day of the event he was there, I would have to say 90 to 95% of the time. Um, he opened the whole event with some opening remarks. Um, all the faculty, staff who were involved, all the student volunteers, as well as the patients were able to attend these opening remarks and it was just, it was a it was a great, um, great coming together of all these people. We also had um, security on hand. Um, these people monitored a little more frequently around around the premises just to keep everyone a little bit more safe that day. There was more traffic, so we just wanted to make sure everyone was safe. Um, the building manager, things like this you kind of don't really think of um, a lot of the times, but we had him reserve a lot of parking spaces. Number one, um, the more accessible parking spaces for our patients who had a little more difficulty um, you know transporting themselves or you know needing a wheelchair things like that we needed to have something a little better for them a little closer for them to um, to access to access our services so we reserved um, parking spaces for this um, another reason parking spaces were reserved were for the tents that I just talked about. We needed an area to put these tents and um, the optimal area was close to the door. So um, this gentleman went, went ahead and reserved those spots for us the night before. Um, our information technology folks were also on board. We'll talk a little more about um, some of the technology we used um, with the flow of the event and how we communicated. Um, different things during the event, but um, IT is a great resource. Um, make sure they're on your side because when something goes down, it's uh, always nice to have someone there to get it back up and running and just makes your day flow a little bit easier. Um, volunteers. We're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about the volunteers that were at the event. Um, we talked a lot about the students and we talked about the staff and faculty. Um, we had um, certified special care dentists who came in. These were people who were recruited by our student leaders. Um, these dentists provided restorative and advanced care for all the patients, um, those who needed it. We had hygienists. These people provided non-surgical um, periodontal care. You can kind of see them working right there. Um, they did all the adult prophies, um, child prophylaxis things that needed to, needed to get taken care of that day. So everyone was hard at work. Again, student volunteers, um, dental students, what they did day of event, um, provided restorative care. They also coordinated radiograph processing, so those are their main, main focuses for the day of the event. Medical students, they completed um, their medical exams. Um, we'll go back to that in a little bit. And hygiene students, again, um, provided non-surgical peri periodontal care, as we mentioned before. This is one of our doctors and a couple of the students um, just collaborating on some treatment there. Faculty and staff volunteers, again, um, these is, this is kind of a list of everyone from our school, ATSU, and more specifically our dental school, ASDO, um, who participated. There, there was, um, we have data, I could bring it up in a little bit of how many people volunteered, but we essentially had one or more people from all these areas just collaborating to make this um, a great success, and they're all looking forward to to this event happening again in the future. So we're very, very grateful for all for all the help that these people provided. Pre-health profession volunteers. Um, these were students that were recruited from local colleges. There's always pre-health 
um, profession volunteers who want to be involved with any aspect of you know the medical field, whether they're the medical uh, you know um, pre med students, pre dental students, um, even public health students. These these students are so excited to be involved. So there's always a place for every volunteer. Um, these people were in sterilization areas, supply inventory areas, they were escorts, um, they monitored the elevators to make sure the patients were okay, and there were also bathroom monitors just making sure that everyone was um, easily accessing every area of the clinic. These, um, this is a picture of um, one of our patients and some of our volunteers, you guys might recognize that, <laughs> the lady in the middle, Miss McCain. Um, but they're just, they're amazing people. These patients are so grateful for everything that we do and they touch our lives more than we can even begin to touch theirs. So the patient population, um, the majority of our patients again came up from follow-up care with Special Olympics Special Smiles. That was our main population pool there. Um, other special needs organizations around the Phoenix Valley area were the Valley Life. It's is just an organization that um, that aids in in taking care of the special needs population. Um, Developmental Disabil Disability Planning Council. Um, we also got some patients from there, and um, we also got patients from our own ASDO special care unit within our dental school. We have um, a special needs care unit. And there was some patients who couldn't afford treatment or were just in some situations that um, they needed a little extra help. So we were able to get patients from these areas and bring them all together on the event, day of the event and provide care. So um, the Valley Life, the special needs organizations, I'm sure that these are not mimicked in every city specifically, but I'm sure there's special needs organizations, like I said, in your community that you can, you know, tap into resources like this and and um, gain um, a larger patient pool if you needed to. So it's, it's another option, another option to get some more patients involved and to increase your your impact. The general flow of the event, when I was talking about IT, this is kind of what I was alluding to. Um, Google Drive, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with it, but essentially what we did was we made a spreadsheet um, that all our leaders could access and everyone involved with um, patient check-in, patient check-out, um, things like that. We all had access to this spreadsheet and we were able to communicate the status of the patient through this um, spreadsheet via like different colors. So if they checked in, um, if they were at the check-in station and they checked in, their name would go from a white status to a green status, so a green bar would pop up. Um, let's say if they went from check-in um, to actually being treated, it would turn from, let's say, a green bar to maybe a yellow bar. Um, and that bar would change all the way, the color would change for the patient all the way to checkout, which essentially might be like, um, I don't know, like a grayed out box at that point to tell us, oh, um, patient JD is now, you know, done with completely done with treatment and they've been dismissed. So that was one way that we were able to communicate the patient's whereabouts, which was good because maybe um, I would be looking for a patient because their care caregiver, you know, is concerned about them. I wouldn't know exactly where to go um, to find that patient at that very moment. So registration, this is where the patient um, gets confirmed that they're here on that on on that spreadsheet that I was talking about. Um, the name is highlighted. What we also do is confirm that the patient is on the treatment list and if they're not um, we can kind of pull some strings and get them into a slot. Like I said before we have people pre-scheduled so it was kind of hard to accommodate walk-ins um, and we did not advertise for walk-ins but there was the event that some people heard about the event um, through word of mouth and showed up so we were able to accommodate the majority of those people as well. Um, you just kind of give the patient a brief overview of the experience, um, provide a wheelchair or special assistance if needed, and you would escort the patient to the waiting room. Um, if you have a dual story building, it's probably wise to go ahead and use the elevator instead of stairs, and this is where your elevator monitors would come in really, really handy because they'd be able to monitor who's coming up and down and when patients are going to treatment rooms. 
um, while the patient's in the chair, you want to confirm patient information. Um, there's some forms that we'll talk about that were needed for our event. Um, they could change from event to event, but for our event, they were they were very much needed. Um, we want to confirm that all treatment and consents are are filled out and signed. Um, comprehensive treatment provided at chair at the chair. So um, we took radiographs. We did the restorative care, um, any periodontal care that was needed. Everything was taking place at 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 that chair. They never moved from that chair once they were sat. Um, we recorded treatment that was completed. We had them sign all forms again, and then we would escort the patient from the chair back to the back to the checkout counter. This is an example of the forms that might be needed at your event. They were needed at ours. Um, a triage form. This kind of gives the provider um, an advanced idea of what the patient needs um, treatment-wise. Consent forms are needed just to make sure that everyone is on um, on the same page as to what's going to be occurring, what treatment's going to be provided, and um, the um, the benefits that can come from the treatment as well. Um, patient record. This is an example of the patient record that was created from the Arizona Dental Foundation um, because they provided the majority of our items. Um, for treatment, everything was donated. Um, they like to track how many patients were seen, what um, what procedures were completed, and things like that. So this is um, an idea of a sheet that can kind of um, track all that information that was completed with the patients. At checkout, um, this is where Amanda, our receptionist, came in very handy and she was just great at what she did. Um, she verified forms and made sure everything was completed. Um, she made sure all signatures were, were appropriate. And she also made the follow-up appointments for the patients if necessary. Again, we provided wheelchair or special assistance if needed to transport the patient back to their vehicle or downstairs to get involved with the other activities. Um, and, and that's about it for checkout. So it was pretty straightforward. The medical exams were completed by um, the DO students, the medical doctors. Um, they completed basic exams, um, the H-E-E-N-T, head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat exams. They also completed nutritional counseling. They talked to patients about healthy food options and exercising. So it was a great, a great addition to the event, and it was fabulous to have that interdisciplinary action between the dental and medical students just a little more cohesion in, you know, in the big medical arena, people coming together to serving for, you know, a dual purpose. And um, it was, it was pretty amazing. Everyone was really excited to be working together because essentially we're always, you know, in our separate, separate areas or separate buildings or separate clinics. But on this day we came together and joined forces, which was a lot of fun. Um, oral health instruction and goodie bags. This was happening outside um, at the tent areas. We had, for the oral health instruction, we had a bunch of puppets that patients could play with, and we would demonstrate um, toothbrushing techniques and things like that. Um, we would just explain to them how to maintain a healthy oral cavity. We would also provide the goodie bag that had toothbrushes, that had toothpaste. Um, these were all donated items, again. Um, it had an oral health instruction card for patients to refer back to if need be. The training that we had, um, it was a one-hour training for all participants, and it was prov provided before the event. What we essentially did was we um, scheduled two different time frames. I think it was um, a lunch period and maybe an evening period um, when we did the trainings. And what we wanted to do was just educate all the volunteers before the event. We wanted to make them aware of who their leaders were. Um, who their support people were. We wanted to inform them of the event flow. We wanted to make sure they knew where the patient would go um, at a certain sequence of the event. Um, we wanted them to know what their responsibilities were firsthand so that they can um, so that they can fulfill their responsibilities um, efficiently and appropriately. We also let them um, understand and um, see the forms that needed to be filled out. This was something that was really important to show beforehand um, because if 
if if students and volunteers um, volunteers alike do not know these things, um, the day gets slowed down and um, more confusion may occur and um, the day might not run as smoothly as planned. So this training event was probably um, one of the best things that we did to to get everyone um, on a on the same page about the whole event. We also let them know who their emergency contacts were and how to get how to get a hold of doctors or if we needed um, an emergency situation to get um, the community medics involved. That was also also made um, apparent to them. Special add-ons. Um, again, we kind of went over some of this. We had the dean speaking um, our opening remarks, and a lot of our pictures you saw. Our guest of honor was Miss McCain. Uh, it's also always nice to have a special um, guest of honor there to kind of, kind of get you know everyone a little more excited about everything. Again, we had the media there. Um, we had a breakfast and lunch for the volunteers. Um, we had um, photographers and things like that. So everything, everything was pretty amazing. Community impact. Um, we wanted to highlight the needs of the local population with ID and ND. We wanted to map local dental providers for populate for population with ND and ID. Um, we wanted to create referral lists of dentists, engage in local businesses in healthcare. Um, I wanted to. And we wanted to just get everyone more involved in treating this special, this special population. And it seemed like we, we succeeded in that. You know, everyone from the remarks that we got post-event, everyone's really excited to be involved again next year. Um, the data um, that we compiled, we compiled a little bit of data. Like I said, this essentially came from the forms that we provided um, chair side. So, um, essentially at our event we saw a total of 47 patients. Again, this event probably lasted from 9 to maybe 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, our volunteer data, we had a total of 75 volunteers. Um, we, tr we completed 275 treatment procedures and we provided a total of $21,866 um, worth of treatment. So it was, it was pretty, pretty amazing. Improvements for next year and years to come. Um, we'd like to be able to provide patient transportation. That might be why some of our patients weren't able to make it to um, to our services, is because they had no way of getting to us. So we would like to um, increase increase our increase our our um, abilities and provide patient transportation. Um, we would like full clinic involvement. So we would like our entire dental clinic and not only um, part of our dental clinic to be involved. Uh, mainly the reason for this year was because we had other um, general patients scheduled in the schedule already and it was it was kind of hard to coordinate um, the cancellation and rescheduling of all these patients. So next year we're hoping to get the full clinic involvement and also increase the program involvement at AT Steele University. Um, we have these seven programs um, involved in, you know, in the school and we hope to get all these people um, involved in the Day for Special Smiles to really become a true interdisciplinary event at our school. And I think that's all I have right now. Um, I appreciate your time and your attention, and I'm going to go ahead and give the floor back over to Michelle. Thank you very much. Sarah, thank you so much for your amazing presentation. It's uh, very exciting to be able to share all this information with each other. Um, and uh, you all put a ton of work into, um, into the event, and it definitely paid off. Thank you. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how to create Disabilities Awareness Week. Uh, for two years in a row, I was lucky enough to uh, be involved in the planning of this week through AMSA, the American Medical Student Association at Bob Wood Johnson Medical School. So hopefully I can pass on some information that will help you create a similar event um, at your school. So to give you a brief overview, I'm just going to kind of go over an introduction of Disabilities Awareness Week, uh, what you need to do to prepare for it. Um, I'm going to give you a little more detail of the event, and I'll go into a little summary. Okay. So um, the main mission for our Disabilities Awareness Week was to uh, promote understanding of issues facing individuals with disabilities, particularly obtaining adequate health care. However, depending on what you guys want to get out of the event, you can also address the challenges facing disabled medical students, physicians, and other healthcare providers. Um, 
Now, disability is a very broad term. You go over topics like physical disability, intellectual disability, developmental disability. There's also a lot of psychological issues that um, sometimes aren't brought up, like depression, but are very common that uh, something that your school might want to bring up. And then what population are you talking about? Do we talk about the general population? Or like I said before, talk about uh, medical dental students, physicians, dentists, or anyone in the medical community. So the first thing you want to do um, before you start all this is I would definitely suggest um, taking a data few months in advance. As you can see by this, um, this image, our school actually has a calendar on our website, and your school might have a similar thing, where all the different uh, school organizations kind of post ahead of time what events they have coming up. So this way you can kind of view what's going on so you don't kind of you don't have any conflicting events. Also make sure you reserve the, the room in um, the auditorium. Also collaboration is huge. Uh, you want this will allow you to increase attendance and therefore improve awareness. It also allows for camaraderie of most clubs to help the funding. Um, and for us we ended up collaborating with the Elizabeth M. Bach Center and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. The Office of Multicultural Affairs, the Clinical Neuroscience Group, and the Pediatric Teachers Group. Advertisement is huge. You really want to make sure that you get as much information out there to as many people as possible um, to allow for increased attendance. So some of the things that we did was we sent out a class email to um, our listserv. We also um, printed out a bunch of those uh, posters that you usually see at research days. Um, and hung them up uh, with the details of our events and when they were being held. We also put up flyers. We made announcements before classes. We made announcements for club meetings. We even put um, the advertisements in newsletters. We really wanted to try to have as many people come as possible. And it was actually very successful. We had a lot of people coming. So um, these different techniques really do work. So we definitely suggest them. You also, when you send out the emails, you want to make sure they're pretty catchy um, and that they're not super long because medical and dental students are so very busy. Um, so you want it to make it short and speed. And you also want to highlight really important things, like what kind of food you're having. <laughs> so um, the Thai food, I have to say, was a huge hit. Uh, if you guys can fundraise it and get some Thai food there, lots of people come. Um, so at one of our weeks, we had uh, Dr. Paul Kansi come. And he's a motivational speaker who has DT. And he has inspired many individuals, including uh, Special Olympic athletes and uh, government leaders in the UN. Um, so he, he really is a really wonderful man. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about him later. We also had a TED Talk featuring Temple uh, Grandin. And she's um, a world famous animal scientist, speaker, and author um, who also has functioning autism. And that was also a very popular event. And another one of our events is who worked with the Fox Center. We had a parent panel come and discuss um, what it was like navigating through the medical system with children with complex needs. This is just kind of an example of what you know what we sent out. Now, this is an example of one of those uh, large posters we um, hung up around our school. As you can see, um, Dr. Paul can see both. We had the TED Talk, and we also had a panel of uh, parents. Now, um, we did this for two years. So another year, uh, we had Paul Kansky come again, but this time we had a showing of Murder Ball, which is um, a movie I would definitely recommend for anyone. It's about a, a quadriplegic playing rugby. It's uh, pretty intense, so definitely suggest it. We also had Dr. Uh, Nancy Hayes come, and she kind of talked about the neurobi neurobiology behind uh, court injuries. And um, personally, my favorite event, I think a lot of other people's favorite event, was when we got to go to the Special Olympics. Um, we helped out with cycling. Um, besides scheduling and advertising and, and whatnot, uh, funding is very important. Uh, so a lot of the money that we raised um, came through collaborating with different clubs and organizations. You can also do uh, various fundraisers. Like I said before, medical students love food and sugar. So bake sales and lollipop sales are, are really popular. Um, one thing that was clear around with what we didn't end up doing was um, having some sort of survivor guide or toolkit for like the incoming medical students. This could be the same thing for dental students. So, for example, um, one of the things we were playing around with was for our anatomy lab, we learned later on that it's a good idea to have like, a container to put your old scrubs in and have an extra pair of scrubs. 
so part of the survival kit could include like, like a senior and like, experience drugs or, you know, some pencils or a coffee mug or something along those lines. So not only are you kind of passing on helpful advice to the incoming class, you can also help raise money for your event. Another popular thing that we did was actually we got together some exam practice questions and we made it into a book and we sold those and those were very popular. If you're able to do this through um, AMSA, um, I also provided a link where you can actually go on and uh, AMSA provides a local project grant. So if you're quite early enough, you can get funding through them. Equipment is also really important. You want to talk to your um, media service center and make sure you have all the appropriate equipment you have them on board. Like microphones, DVD player, a really cute little kid, I'm sure he would uh, have a lot of people come to see him. And actually, I think this PowerPoint to Dr. Lukansky before I, I, I um, went on tonight to see what he thought, um, make sure he was okay with everything, because there's a bunch more pictures of him you'll see later. They're really great. And he told me, he didn't give me much, many suggestions. The one suggestion he did tell me was to put that he needs cold water, for, or we need cold water for speakers. So um, just to let you guys know, it does matter. Don't get a room temperature water. Cold water is important, okay? I thought that was kind of funny, so I wanted to share with you guys. Um, the other thing is um, to delegate your work. Uh, not one person can do everything, and the more people that are involved, the better. So this is just an example of um, some of the uh, volunteers we had at one of our events and how we delegated the, the, the workload. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the events and how you could kind of incorporate it into your disability awareness week if you'd like. So if you're interested in taking part in like a Special Olympics event, uh, this is actually the website for Special Olympics New Jersey, but you can always go on Google and uh, type in Special Olympics in your state. Um, it's very simple. You just you register, and then they have usually a list of different events that are going on. You sign up, and then you're able to participate, and you can participate as a team as well. And like I said before, we were fortunate enough to help out with the cycling. We helped with registration, and we were um, we worked with athletes, getting them to the starting line, and helping them at the finish line. And if you're interested at all in having motivational speaker come, uh, Dr. Rickansky, you can find him um, at this website below, visioninmotion.com. And there's also other motivational speakers that you can find from that website as well. Uh, but he is really a wonderful um, leader, uh, and he's very inspirational. I really like this quote. Each of us can be heroes, ordinary people who triumph over extraordinary circumstances, like our favorite television characters do every week. So hopefully you guys can meet him someday. And then with these particular events, if you do introduce a speaker, um, I mean, a lot of the stuff in organizing this event I learned kind of on the fly as we went. But just to give you guys more information, um, how we introduced Dr. Rakansky, we started off with the goal of Disabilities Awareness Week. We thanked everyone that helped us out, and then we kind of gave a brief biography of the speaker. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about our um, collaboration with Elizabeth M. Uh, Bob Center um, and how we worked with them to kind of team up um, to organize a panel of parents who had children with complex medical issues. And they kind of share with the medical students um, what it was like navigating through the current medical system with their children. And I really wanted to expand upon this a little bit more because I didn't know what a USED was, which is a University Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities, Education, Research, and Service, until Dr. Seth Keller actually told me about it. And I think this is a wonderful resource that any um, uh, medical or dental um, school or anyone interested. Um, and learning more about serving individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities should know about. So, what are you, um, so you, um, you said it's been around since 1963. There's 70, uh, 67, you said, and they're located every state and territory. Uh, it works with people with disabilities, their families, state and local agencies, community providers. And it's involved in projects that provide training, clinical assistance, service, research, and advocacy. And they've actually played a key role in um, major disability initiatives like early intervention, healthcare, community-based services, inclusive and mean uh, meaningful education, transition from school to work, employment and housing, 
and assisted technology. So why I brought them up is um, we were to the Elizabeth M. Bog Center, and if you guys have a local one, um, we definitely suggest teaming up with, with your local USAT. And how you can do that is you can use this website at the bottom of the page um, and then go to Network Centers. And then when you get to this directory, you can just kind of click on um, your particular state and find out that information. Now, to the class and stuff on like different events you could be involved with, um, some of the things that we played around with what we um, didn't end up doing included uh, a spring carnival, a game night, a poetry slam, a dinner party, and a holiday party. So we're in summary to uh, create some sort of disabilities awareness um, week. You first want to kind of get your chapter on board to create this event, schedule a date, collaborate with many organizations, um, advertise as much as possible, fundraise, make sure you have the right equipment, delegate responsibilities, and have a lot of fun because it goes by quickly and it's really wonderful. And then just thank everyone that helped you because um, it's definitely a huge team effort. So um, if you if you all look at the license plate Dr. Wachanski has, I absolutely love it. It says, I know I can. And at the risk of sounding very um, corny, I want to let you know, or we all want to let you know that we know you can create your own disabilities awareness week or a special style. Um, before we end and open up to questions, we want to just put in a plug, because we try to plug this as much as possible wherever we are. Um, and the R Word campaign and pledge. If any of you or any of your schools are interested, uh, you can visit this website here to make your pledge. And if you're interested in getting your school or institution more involved, some of the things that we suggest is um, finding a poster at your local student center with students that are walking by to make this pledge. Um, hand out flyers with websites so individuals can make their own pledge or have some sort of movie showing and then have a discussion afterwards, just to kind of spread the word and, and um, hopefully we can, we can end the use of the R word and, and really encourage others to as well. So um, we, Sarah and I also wanted to thank a lot of people because there's a lot of people that really um, work hard and have made um, this happen as well as all these other events that we talked about before happen. Um, of course, a DMD, um, Arizona School of Dentistry and Oral Health, as well as their School of Osteopathic Medicine, uh, Robert Johnson, AMSA, the Elizabeth and Bog Center, Dr. Rakansky, Dr. Keller, Fisher, Holder, and Francis, Abra, of course, you've heard his name multiple times, he's been involved with everything, it's fantastic, same thing with Priya. And also, thank you all for coming out so much. We know everyone has a very busy schedule, and um, it just means the world to us that you guys came and, and um, share this with us. So that being said, I don't see any questions right now, but if anyone does have questions, just please put them in a text box on the right underneath that chat, and we can read them out loud and um, answer your questions. Um, I guess as you guys think of that, I also want to let you know that we are recording this. So I know some people already told me that they're very, um, they have like midterms this week, and they really wanted to come, but they weren't able to. Um, and so they really like to see or listen to the PowerPoint. So we're going to put this on the AAD um, website, uh, probably in the, um, the uh, AAD student resident chapter web page. And at the bottom of the screen is uh, the, the uh, URL that you can um, use to access this information. Also, if you're interested at all in joining AAD and um, you can also visit this website to find that information. Um, if you're super, you know, uh, motivated and you want to start a chapter um, on this website, there's also uh, the documents that you would need to fill out uh, to form that chapter. It's very simple. Um, like I said, we've had seven chapters already formed. Um, so we would, we would love to have you guys join our team. So I don't see any questions. Um, We've we've got one, uh, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, from from uh, uh, right here, uh, asking about where do you find a certified special care dentist? And um, oh, and she's in Pennsylvania. Um, so uh, I, I I can 
somewhat answer that and and Sarah feel free to jump in um, there is an organization called special care dentistry uh, association that that uh, the AADMD is affiliated with and um, you know they, they do have a a uh, certification uh, I believe process in special care dentistry um, there are other means by which you can define somebody who is uh, sort of specialized in this area because it's uh, not terribly well developed so um, there are a number of people who would be known to organizations like the AADMD and like Special Care Dentistry Association who maybe haven't gone through that particular certification process but who have devoted their um, clinical life to taking care of this uh, patient population. Also, um, if uh, and, and, and these organizations tend to work in concert with each other to identify these clinicians. Um, Special Olympics is also another great resource uh, because a lot of the people who uh, also devote their practice or devote a, a large portion of their practice or at least interested uh, heavily in this um, area tend to volunteer as clinical directors uh, for the Special Smiles program uh, in dentistry specifically or the MedFest program in medicine uh, through um, Special Olympics. So you can um, check with any of those uh, organizations. Uh, also, uh, I, I see Abra here is, is commenting that uh, your local dental association uh, also might have a list um, of, of people who are there as well. Um, Abra, are you, are you able to speak? Are you able to speak? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I've got you there. Sorry, Abra. I, I, I took you by surprise. I think uh, we got some feedback. Um, but uh, I think that's a, a great resource. Uh, Dr. Um, Holder, do you think we could unmute Dr. Um, Francis? She might have something to say. She was asking me if we could unmute, and I don't know if that's possible. Yes, absolutely we can do that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that right now. Denise, you are live. Are you, are you there, Denise? Uh, Dr. Francis, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she also mentioned that um, she's she's on here with her headset on her computer as well as on a telephone. She's not sure of the um, communication between her computer, so I don't know if that can help us at all. Well, no, I do have her microphone open, so I think it would be through the computer and not through the phone, based on okay. what I'm seeing here. But um, I think I think your response to the question was fabulous. I just wanted to see if she had any other input, but I think I think that was great. We can always get you in touch with Dr. Francis as well because she has uh, an extensive uh, network of peers uh, throughout the country. Um, so if you are in a particular state and you're looking for um, somebody in your area, um, you know, just getting in touch with um, with us, uh, with Dr. Francis, you know, in, in almost any one of those starting points, um, we should be able to get you in touch with everybody else so that we can find the right people to, to help you. Um, and um, actually, Denise, uh, Dr. Francis just sent her email address uh, for people to see. Um, you know what, I'm going to, if you go down, I'm, I'm, if you can see your chat box, folks, I'm going to um, send this out to everybody there at ATSU, dfrancis at atsu.edu, so you can see what her email is in case you're looking for that. Um, another follow-up question about whether you're going to be able to get a copy of the uh, PowerPoint. Um, John, is that something we're going to be able to do? Can we post this up on the, on the student page? Yeah, we can uh, post this on the student page, and I'm probably going to add a subsection um, for any student webinars, and I will be able to post this entire webinar there as well. So if you know somebody that, that, that wasn't able to join us tonight, um, you can direct them to that page, and we will be sending out an email once that archive is available. That's great. Uh, you know, this, um, this webinar forum, too, is available for use. Uh, for anybody who is, uh, you know, part of a student chapter, an AADMD student chapter, um, you know, all you have to do is contact us. Um, I'll send out my email as well, um, or you can just um, contact us through our website and uh, let us know, or uh, through the student chapter group, and um, let us know that you want to use the webinar 
system for your own purposes if, if it, you feel like you would like to use that. Um, I'm sending out my email now for anybody who's interested. Um, one other thing that, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt, just one last thing. And if you do go on the Student Resident Committee um, website that you see the URL on the page right here, uh, Dr. Fisher and my email is there. So you can also email us if you have any questions. I think um, one thing that you, you both touched on, which I think is really important, is the the importance of having partners in this type of endeavor. Um, you know, here you're trying to reach out to a patient population that has largely been ignored or underserved uh, or perhaps improperly served by the medical or dental profession. And, um, and, and you're trying to, uh, at the same time, increase the awareness uh, among your colleagues, among your professors even, because many of them may not even know um, about this, this patient population. Um, and so resources are going to be limited um, and um, it helps to have as many partners as you can get. So uh, that's why, for example, uh, you know, the AADMD and Special Olympics um, work very closely together um, w with regard to, these, to, to the student chapters because um, we see, uh, we, we know that, for example, um, the AADMD has a very strong interest in changing academia and changing uh, how things are taught in medical and dental schools. And Special Olympics has a, a strong network, a strong infrastructure in terms of reaching um, people with intellectual disabilities, providing them with uh, sports opportunities, and having a, a, a very robust health screening um, program the, through their Healthy Athletes program. Um, and so these are very complementary to each other, and um, we work very well together. And then we also uh, include a number of other organizations as well. So you know, I, I saw that both of you had um, large uh, lists of, of multiple groups that that came together, uh, both national and local and state, uh, to really pull off your event. Um, so I applaud you for doing that. But I, I just want to highlight that that I think is very important um, as you go about planning this. And that will um, definitely be in our events and also um, be with the Student Resident Committee and our relationship with um, the AADMD. Um, so I, I think that if there's any people on tonight, I know we have people from all over the place, Jamaica, Germany, um, Canada, um, throughout the United States. If there's anyone that wants to form a chapter or share ideas or just join, please, please visit our website so that uh, we can keep growing and, and learning from each other. Yeah, what you'll find, uh, you know, after being in this for a while, uh, this particular field is very new. Um, you know, as of 20 years ago, there were not uh, nearly as many um, adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and just in general, the population of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities did not have the same visibility that they do now. And but we still have a long way to go. Um, but one of the most wonderful things about uh, this generation of medical and dental students is that they've grown up with uh, a, a level of technology and connectedness that did not exist for people even uh, like me who, who went through 10 years ago. We, we didn't have it. And um, this has allowed us to, to see what uh, other groups in other uh, countries are doing other states are doing that just we never would have had that opportunity before you know even if these clubs are small even if you have five or ten people that are that are interested uh, in in this um, you can reach out and you can find other groups that are just like you but uh, around the country or around the world um, and they're all out there but uh, we're just trying to uh, provide a forum where we can all learn from each other and uh, from from great students like like Michelle and Sarah that we've in Agra that we've heard from today with these programs and these are amazing programs by the way you know this is I was thank you so much for um, for showing these um, because you know I didn't uh, have I've even heard about them but I haven't had the full appreciation of everything that went into this um, I, I would like to ask both of you um, 
just in general, how was the reception from the students that were involved with each of your programs in terms of, you know, did, did they did they enjoy it? Did, do you think that it impacted their impression of intellectual disabilities or disabilities in general? Um, what, what's your impression of your impact on your fellow students? Um, well, uh, oh, there you go first. Okay, sure. Um, I actually have one really interesting story about that. Um, so as, as you saw, we had um, dental students and hygiene students and uh, um, the medical students, um, everyone coming together. And, I, and I'm pretty sure the medical students have some kind of um, educational input on, you know, the special needs population. And definitely the dental students do. You know, we have the special needs um, care unit where we all rotate through and we do um, some rotations through there um, pretty regularly. But the hiking students that came in, um, they're actually an external organization from the school and um, there was one one hygienist in, in particular, she came in and I, I don't think she realized what she signed up for. Um, not that it was difficult, but she just wasn't um, truly prepared for the population. So she sat down with her first patient and she was almost terrified. She came to Karen, who was the lead hygienist that day, as I was mentioning, and she was almost in tears. And she told Karen, you know, Karen, I, I think you're going to have to take over because I, I can't do this. I just, I, I'm not prepared for this. Well, Karen took her aside and just kind of talked to her for a little bit, kind of educated her about the patient. Um, you know, the student was worried that she was going to hurt the patient or she just didn't know how to... Um, how to how to manage the patient. Well, after the little talk, um, the student went back to the chair and um, completed um, the the cleaning, the prophylaxis that needed to be done. And by the time the appointment was over, she was just glowing. And she went back up to Karen after the appointment was done, and she says, "I want to dedicate my life to this population." She was just ecstatic. I mean, it was just. We have a picture of her, and I think they actually even published it in a newspaper, maybe or something like that. But it was just phenomenal to hear, you know, the impact that we had on this one individual. And you know, this is just one story that came out of the whole day. But I'm sure the impact um, went further than that, but um, specifically that's something fabulous that I heard on that day. Wow. And similar over at, at Robert Johnson, um, we definitely had uh, excellent turnout and um, after p some of the events, like uh, when Dr. Polakansky came, people came up to me afterwards and said how um, it was extremely inspiring and how that, um, that was his favorite event all year. And the following year when he was going to present, people you know, even though it was the same presentation, people um, loved it so much last year that they were that more excited to come this year. Um, and it wasn't just the, the medical students. We had medical students come. We had um, uh, students from uh, the School of Public Health come, faculty and so on and so forth. It not only um, touched them, but also, for example, the panelists, um, the parents that came from Elizabeth, Elizabeth um, Fogg Center, we were so excited to finally have a voice and finally have a podium where they could speak and talk about their children and talk about their families and how, you know, their life has been affected and how difficult it is to navigate through the healthcare system and have people, um, young people that were going into the medical field to talk to and to teach um, etiquette and to teach, you know, what they saw as some things that were wrong in the medical field and how, you know, from their point of view, how to make it right. So I thought it, it not only um, was wonderful for for the students and faculty and and, um, and the people that were involved in creating it, but also, you know, the, the, the people that volunteered their time to come in and, and speak to us, uh, we all had a really great time. And um, we even, like a lot of people, uh, Facebook, Dr. McCansky on, on our friends, Dr. McCansky on Facebook, and, so keep in touch with him and um, these people you don't just kind of like you know, see them once and, and that's it you know they touch your lives and and we form uh, we form multiple bonds so it, it's been a wonderful experience and I really hope that um, everyone that's listening everyone that will look at the PowerPoint um, later on via our website can have similar experiences because um, they never would have experience just like this it, it's very touching and very memorable and I'm just listening to Sarah talk about her 
experience. I mean, I was smiling the entire time. It's just um, something precious. I really hope that you guys can can kind of take what we, we share with you guys and, and create your own, and then hopefully maybe you guys can then share it with us and share it with others so we can keep this going. You know, uh, just listening to the two of you is bringing a smile to my face. I, uh, it's it's great to hear other people who are, uh, you know, fairly new to this, uh, having such a positive experience. I, and you know, one thing I also want to say, just to you know, to the students listening, is that I think that this field, because it is so new and and yet and so underdeveloped, that there are a lot of leadership opportunities uh, that that come with being involved in this field um, and I think that there's something that um, uh, that comes along with uh, as, as you've seen you know it's not just oh I'm gonna show up and take care of these patients today it's uh, we're gonna take care of these patients but first we have to figure out how they're gonna get there who our partners are gonna be where we're gonna get the funding how we're gonna deal with the follow-up care how they're going to pay for the follow-up care, um, how we educate our fellow uh, students, how we educate our our, st our faculty, um, how we get our school involved. Uh, you know, there are there's a lot of opportunity here to tap into more than just the medical or dental field, um, just as a professional. Um, so I think that's just one of one of the benefits I think of being involved. Um, I think uh, I, I, Abra would like to say something. Abra, I'm going to un unmute your mic here. What I would suggest, oh, here you go. I think you're on the phone here. So I'm going to unmute you and see if this works. Abra, are you there? Yeah, um, I'm, I connect actually uh, through the phone. Um, I may add that um, the reaction we got, um, very deep, uh, few, few different reactions. One was kind of the first stage. You know, you go for the deeper special smiles or or special emphasis, special smiles, and that's that first stage type of thing. You know, you kind of tend to feel each other. And um, um, one of the things I heard on the car going to this event is uh, you shouldn't be asking the questions, am I good, good enough to um, do I have enough set of skills to treat the population? Uh, and that's kind of super nice to know when they go there, because when they come back, they say, yes, they do. Um, and other, uh, the reactions I have, some of them, when they come back, it's like, wow, if I'm able to treat this population, if I, if I am able to treat any population um, because of uh, complex patients and everything. So the point I want to make is that, um, you know, there's different ways that you get lured to these uh, events, um, but the outcome of the event is uh, similar. Um, everybody that goes to events, in the sense that we have for the last two years, uh, three years, of people like, oh, I can do them. And uh, you see the second years and third years um, that already have this sense of uh, like uh, normalcy, like oh yeah, it's normal. I can I, I can do that, so it's no big deal anymore. And that's uh, you know what you see, what I'm seeing with my with fellow um, my lower classmates, and that's just fantastic. So I think, like you said, a lot of uh, leadership opportunities and a lot of um, great great challenges within to grow you as a provider um, by treating this population. So that's the good, the good thing about it as well. All right. Um, well, Abra, I mean, what can I say? You know, uh, we've been working together for a while. It's Your enthusiasm is, is contagious. I know that uh, for sure. <laughs> And uh, I, you know, I'm expecting great things from you because I know you're graduating soon. So, uh, you know, I, I hope you, I, well, I know you're going to be staying in this. And uh, yeah. so uh, you'll be on to the next level, I think, after this, right? Uh, I, I, you know, I'm with you guys. You guys are st stuck with me for life. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so, I feel, I'm just sorry for you guys, but, but uh, I'll, I'll take it. It's all right. It's a tight knit club. It's, all, it's, it's good. Um, well, uh, Michelle, Sarah, um, I, I want to um, turn it back over to you. I, I, I don't know if we have, I don't see any other uh, questions. Um, I know we're getting a little bit uh, close to uh, 9.30 here, so I just wanted to turn it back over to you, see if there's any sort of parting comments or anything else that you you need to do uh, to close this out. Actually, um, I, I, we forgot to thank 
Um, well, thank you to everyone. But there was one person, Dr. John Hood, um, Mr. Um, John Hood, we didn't thank you. And I, I need to let everyone know that um, this man has helped us so much with the website and making sure that um, every all this information is on the website and uh, helping us out with all, like, technical issues and so on and so forth. And I'm, I'm really sorry, but I want to make sure everyone knows that he's amazing and he's <laughs> so efficient and wonderful. And uh, just lastly, thank you all for coming and, and spending your time with us. And um, hopefully we continue to share ideas and, uh, and help each other out. Um, so thank you very much. And Sarah, do you have anything else you want to share? Um, no, I don't. Um, thank you, everybody, for your time. And uh, Michelle, it's back over to you. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Okay, well, that's going to conclude, for our, uh, conclude our first webinar. Hopefully we'll have more in the future. Um, we'll have other students um, presenting and so on and so forth. So please, please visit our website, share ideas. And uh, once again, uh, thank you, Matt Holder. Thank you, AADMD. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Opera. And thank all of you. So have a nice night, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Michelle. Good Thanks, day. everybody. Have a good night. Night. Night.